Hi again, and welcome back to Elements for Bloggers. I'm Jenny Elliott from theblogmaven.com, and in this short tutorial video, you'll learn how to adjust levels on your photos in Elements. Let's get started. All right, we're back here in the editor, and I have a new photo open that I pulled in from the organizer. This is just another snowy picture taken out my car window. And a lot of what we're dealing with in this photo is just a result of the poor lighting conditions. You don't have to feel bad that you're a terrible photographer if you have some lighting issues with your photos. This will happen a lot on overcast days or if you're taking photos inside a lot. There's some elements of your lighting that you'll probably need to adjust on your photos. That's fine, it's super easy, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So the first thing I'm going to do, remember, is to save a copy of this picture. I don't want to edit the original here, so we'll just call this more snow trees, very great description, and click save. Once again, a quality of eight is just fine, especially for the kind of stuff we're going to be doing, like on a blog. Click OK, and now here's my new title. I know that this is saved as a copy. So the first thing with this photo that I need to tackle is a color cast problem. You can see that on this photo I have a blue kind of tint to it. So I showed you before how to go to enhance and then adjust color and remove color cast. Um, I'm going to show you an alternate way to do that right now, just very quickly before we proceed. Once again, I have my layers panel open, bottom right here, so I can see the different layers that I'm working with. And today we're gonna make extensive use of these layers, so make sure you have that open. If you don't, remember you can go to Window and click on Layers. Make sure that is checked so that you'll have that visible there. And then I also have my History panel open as well. So I'm going to go down here to this little half gray, half white circle, and this is going to create a new fill or adjustment layer. I want to create a new adjustment layer for levels. And this is going to automatically open up my adjustments panel. I can see just by looking at my graph here that I have some problems with this photo, but the first thing I'm going to do is remove the color cast by setting a gray point. So I'm clicking on this little eyedropper here and just clicking, and I'm going to do the same exact way that I did it on my photo in the last video, clicking any point in the photo that's supposed to be kind of gray. These rocks or the trees anywhere in there. That, see, that's looking blue to me. So just click around until you find something that looks good. This looks fine to me. This has taken the, the blue out of my picture. So now I don't do anything to close this adjustments panel. You may have to browse around for what elements did with your layers panel, but find layers and click back on it again, and you'll see that this is the new adjustment that came up. So I can toggle this on and off. There's with the blue color cast, and there's where I had removed it. That's the first one, and that's called levels one. I'm going to double click it. I like to keep things very, very organized so I can revisit them later. So I'll call that Remove Color Cast. And again, it's just a second way of doing the same color cast thing that we did last time through the Enhance menu. Now, it's time for me to proceed. I have kind of a washed out look in this photo. And we're gonna create a new adjustment layer and you'll see exactly why on my graph. So with my Remove Color Cast layer selected here, I'm going to go ahead and do another one, click back on that half gray, half white circle, and I'm going to add another levels adjustment. So now we can see that it's starting at the point that I left off with the last adjustment, which is good. And this time I'm going to look at the graph here and what this tells me. This adjustment layer is going to give you fine precision tuning of your different lighting that's in this. So let me explain. On the left hand side, you have your darks. This is all the dark areas of your photo. If any information is above it, then you'll see that here. To the far right, you have all your highlights or all your very lightest parts of your photo. And in the middle, this is your midtones. If this was an extremely dark photo, like if we had fireworks, you'd see a lot of information on this graph over here on the far left, but it's not. There's not a lot of dark going on in this photo. And so to my eye, it's looking completely washed out. There's not a lot of contrast here. So I'm going to take and move that little toggle up to right before the first curve appears. I could start there where the information really starts. I'm going to go even a little bit darker where the contour of 
the graph starts to go up. So this is what's called bumping up the darks in your picture. At the other end of your graph on the right, you'll see that there's no information over here where the highlights are. So I'm going to move this slider in to where I see the curve going back up again. When I make these adjustments, any information that is to the left of this toggle or to the right of the highlights toggle is going to be cut off. Basically, we're bringing the limits of the graph closer to the information that's actually contained in the photo. So everything that's on the outside of the limits that you set is going to be lost. It's information that's going to be lost in the photo. So if I, let's say, bumped this way up here, then all this information here would be lost. And you can tell all the detail in these trees now that are dark is, has been completely lost. So let me reset that down here. And there we go. So I've pulled in the outer limits of my graph to match the information actually contained in the photo. And then this middle toggle here is for the midtones. I usually end up sliding the midtones just a little bit to the left. And all that does is give a little bit more space for the highlights. So this is going to kind of brighten up the photo some, so we have more information here in the brights area. Kind of confusing, but you'll see it all in action in a minute. Now, as far as what numbers are contained in here, this is going to vary from picture to picture. Even if I had taken two photos at the same time, on the same day, in the same place, you might have different numbers here. Basically, all we're going for is looking over here in our preview on the left, what looks good to your eye? This is completely subjective. Two people would probably do this differently. I'm just showing you how I would do it here. So if I have my graph now the way I want it, I've brought in the limits to where there's information. I kind of move my midtones down a little bit to make it brighter. Now I'm going to go back to the layers. And once again, there's nothing to save here. So I'll just go back to the layer. And you'll see now I have a new levels layer here, which I can turn on and off. And there's the before. And here is the after. That's a big difference. Before, completely gray. Looks like we might be in the middle of the blinding snowstorm. And here you can see that it's actually a pretty bright day outside. So double clicking here, I'll rename this one to Levels Adjustment. If you don't think that your photo is completely popping at this point, you can make some other adjustments as well. I got as close as I could with just the graph, but I can add another layer here that is brightness and contrast. And brightness and contrast does pretty much the same thing that levels does, only it's a little bit more linear. It's easier to see what you're doing. Um, it does not have the fine-tuned control. You know, you can't see a graph where you know where the information is. So this is a little bit more of a fudge factor, but it's kind of nice to clean up with this one at the end. So let's say I want to bump up my brightness a little bit more, make my snow just a little bit whiter, and then I'm going to up the contrast as well, just a little bit to make these trees really pop here in the middle. And once again, back to my layers. So I did three different types of adjustments here. I removed the color cast first, then I did my levels, and then I did my brightness and contrast. Any of these is completely optional. I would do them in this order, however, if you're going to be doing all three of them. If you want to see a before and after here, I'm going to try to turn all these off quickly. Then this is what we started with, this blue kind of washed out gray murky photo. And then in just a couple seconds, we got to this level. So not a great artistic photo, but it's way, way better than we started with. So what did we learn today? How to adjust levels on our photos in Photoshop Elements. Today's assignment for you is to find a photo and really make it pop with levels adjustments. Bring in the outer limits of your graph to actually match the information that's in the photo and you'll be amazed at what the difference it makes. And next time on Elements for Bloggers, we'll be performing basic touch-ups like under eye circles, whitening teeth, etc. in Elements. And if you're enjoying this series, I would ask that you please revisit the Elements for Bloggers homepage and share it with your friends. Share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, because really, friends don't let friends blog with ugly pictures. I'm Jenny. Hope you're having a great day, and thanks so much for watching. See you next time.